Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing another installation of the Coach Paul series where we go over player point of views from the Overwatch Champion series and talk about which players are the best in the world on their respective heroes and what makes them just so good. We got another exciting one for you guys today. Today we're going to be VOD reviewing Finn on the Baptiste. Now for those who are less familiar, Finn is a Korean player playing in the Overwatch Champion Series career. He previously played for O2 Blast way back in Contenders and then played two years playing for the San Francisco Shock in 2022 and 2023. He's now playing for From the Gamer in the Overwatch Champion Series Korea division and his team has been among the best. This division is one of the most tightly contested. There's about six or seven teams that could easily make it to land and perform well from this division alone, and Finn's team is definitely among them. The only team that's 3-0 and right now, Team Falcons, the fan favorite, and probably the on-the-paper favorite um, to perform the best on land and be the one seed out of the division is 2-0. and They haven't played a third match yet, um, but Finn's team is 3-0, and and they have uniquely been playing an off-meta strategy. Um, the meta has been this Doomfist composition that you can see Dong Hak team playing here on um, the left with Doomfist, Kiriko, Lucio, and then um, Echo and Tracer for the DPS. But Finn's team has found a unique counter composition with Bernard on the Zarya. Finn actually playing the Baptiste in some of these compositions. So we're going to be looking at that and seeing what makes his BAP so good and focusing mostly on Finn, but also talking a little bit about what makes this counter composition um, so potent and how they've been able to remain 3-0 while playing this off-meta composition. So let's get into it. So it starts off on the end just to take some, some shots with the increased projectiles. Um, so I think just in general, that was never really a bad thing to do. You might just dome somebody. I kind of love this from Finn. Let's back it up one sec. Busy talking about Zenyatta. Look at this positioning up top. It's so safe from the Doomfist, which is the primary threat of this um, sort of meta composition. Something just getting punched and blown up by the Doom with follow-up from the Echo, from the Tracer. Um, but Finn really using just a slight positioning difference, but it's so effective at making sure he's not the primary target. Excuse me, of that Doomfist coming in. I really like this. Just a slight positioning change, but it's so effective to like avoid that first wave of the Doom coming. Okay. Consistency going straight back to that high ground, making sure he's not getting caught in those Doom Cosmic Slams or by those Doom Punches. Great little rotate to get the best angle to sort of watch over his team. Doing a ton of healing. Oh, he actually lives this, like... In. Uh, it does not look like they're gonna win this fight, but... A little bit too far back. Right. Look at how he throws the lamp. And it's kind of like forced in this case because of how he got punched. He just has to like instant frame it. But I'm assuming he's aiming it too. And I'm assuming he would aim it here, even if not like somewhat forced. Let's I have to hide the I always hated that. He kind of does get caught here trying to help his team, who's kind of getting backed in this hallway. Not the best position. Overall, but look what I what I want to point out here is look at the lamp. It's so good because you actually cannot break the lamp from out here in the open. Like he's trying to shoot it, and I think the only person who maybe even has a chance, but he's even like he's too high on the door frame, is Bliss. And because this lamp doesn't LOS the enemy, but LOS is his team. One, they're all safe under the effects of the lamp, mean lamp. For those who are less familiar, it keeps you at 40% health, I believe, is the lowest you can go. It makes you immortal well up, and your health cannot drop below either 30 or 40%, I believe, unless they update it. Since I have last checked, because of the lamp, LOS is the doorway, he'll get the full duration of it to fully live and walk all the way back down the hallway. Now, he's not going to win off of it, 
But that type of lamp placement is so important when, when you're playing that piece. Because if you put it out here and it just gets shot, it's dead in a second and you won't even like make it into the hallway. But because he like perfect places it, but you can't shoot it. Like all these characters cannot shoot this lamp. He gets max lamp value and it's not going to win him the fight because um, Bernard does go down first. But it's still an excellent lamp point of view. Those are some sick, sick exit shots. Just Doma Tracer. Such good aim. Let's see where they decide to roll out. Overall, I'm very interested how this comp has been... Um, Great shift. Really careful about saving his shift here for that like moment of need. Thor would have died there had he not gotten shifted, so. Really excellent by Finn to just have that. He's gonna drop the window here. And the window here is hopefully to secure a tick. At the very least, keep them off point. But this Kyrio is kind of the, the trump, gonna be the trump card, it looks like. Oh, we're gonna beat? I don't know. This is a crazy fight. Um, so in this meta composition that um Don Hack's team is playing, um the the king really in this meta, the king of the meta is the Kiriko alts. Um Really, just don't beat it. I'll maybe talk about that more in depth in another video. I might do a Kiriko VOD. But just to say, the Kiriko out is the king of the meta. So when the other team Kiriko outs, your option is to run and run only. Unless you have your own. But even that is like somewhat suicide. The other counter option a little bit is beat. I don't even... I'm not even sure from what I've watched a couple matches of. I've been watching quite a few of these VODs. I'm not sure the beat is, is, is good enough to beat it. Beautiful lamp to counter a post bomb. Lamp is kind of like a mini ultimate. Many people complain about it for that reason. And, um, good ult there, but not going to be enough. Again, a beat. You're not going to beat the carry out, unfortunately. And his idea there was rather good to like window all of point. It was a window that took a t demanded a ton of space. I had to basically carry out to, to beat it and like stop the ticks. So, which is honestly a good trade just to get the carry out out. He's just being so careful here, like. One of the things I've overall noticed from his play style, at least in this first fight, these first couple of fights rather, it's he's just playing such a unselfish Baptiste, whereas, and I'm a little bit biased, I'm a Baptiste player myself, he's such a fun here. He has the opportunity to do so much damage as well as be like a consistent healer as well. And then when you get the window, you just get to go like crazy, like, I'm going to kill everything mode sometimes. It's so much fun. And in my ranked games, in a lot of these, you see these ranked players on the ladder, you have to play Baptiste a very kind of like selfish play style. We are always playing for yourself, always playing um, with your cooldowns. Like obviously you're going to use them on your teammates when needed, but you really are just prioritizing, keeping yourself alive, um, playing your own life, um, using your cooldowns and playing like more aggressively on the Baptiste to get as much value as you can as possible because it's ranked. You have random teammates. That's what you have to play. But in this team setting, what's been like kind of interesting is to see Finn almost play the opposite play style, but have it be so necessary is to play like the most unselfish Baptiste possible. Where he's like never, like he never wants to use his cooldowns for himself. Basically. He's just playing these really like safe positions where he's not gonna get like messed up by Doomfist, like looked at by Tracer in like a bad timing where he gets a cooldown force. He always wants to have his cooldowns for when his teammates need them. And he just uses two cooldowns in that way and now won't have them. Looking a little bit rough. And then yeah, finally gets forced down by the Tracer. 
once he no longer has his cooldowns, he becomes that like easy target. Um, but when he has them, he's strong. And like I said, he's being so careful not to get them forced in this competition so that when his team needs them, he can save them. I don't know when you're in one fight territory, if you can touch here. And the Bernard grab that he's been holding for, it seems like forever, actually gonna come and clutch there. Oh, this is getting tricky. Off angle. I'd like to see him maybe go in the hallway here a little bit. He has a ship back though. Oh. Should be one though. Too close. The one bubble is actually like enough on Violet lived. But overall, like I said, those first couple of fights, just playing not to have his cooldowns force and use them only and exactly only when his teammates need their ultimate care. Especially on floor. He's been carrying floor like heavily. That kind of gets his shipped. For the first time, that's like the only time I've seen him been able to really get like engaged on by the Doomfist cleanly. This is great. This window is like, again, these windows that he's placing, one of the key things about his windows is like, because at such a high level, where everyone knows how much you do have to respect the, the window. Like, if you go in front of it, you will probably just get blown up. It's two times damage. And these players are so accurate. You're just going to be taking a billion damage by walking in front of a window. It's going to get respected. Um, so one of the ways you use it is, like, in a situation like this. And let's see if we can back it up just one more second here. Like, right before he pops it. As the Doom's in, and now you're ulting to basically zone all these players from the street from running in, even with the beat. Like, it would be hard for them to run through this window and not end up taking, like, some amount of damage from the window that's not, like, you're just going to die. So the window actually, like, forces the beat to, like, prevent them from going so aggro and catches Dong Hack. Far up, so he has to retreat. So, if, like I said, if it's not a window where you can get a lot of kills, it's a window that is going to zone. And that window zoned basically like all of streets. He has your super caring, Flora. Man, recurring beamer. He always has all his cooldowns to like match that initial push from the Doom. Now, along with these Bernard bubbles, um, that has been like. The key tools like CDs and Bernard's bubbles have made Dong Hack's life like so hard on this Doomfist to find any sort of like committed value. Man, love this from him. Same thing as before, just playing us a high ground spot that's slightly better versus Doomfist. And look, he's dodge. Like, if he was like a lot of players here in this situation, would be down here in streets. Okay, look at, look at how you play Overwatch, guys. This is more of a team thing right here. But this is really, 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 like, educational. Look at how you play Overwatch at a high level. How many players are looking at floor if that's the called target? Two? One? I'm going to go by myself. I'm Donghack. I'm going to go and carry myself. No. One. 
Knife's beaming. Bliss is going in. Full HP. Put in some damage. Viper's going in. Irony is also... All five players, guys, are focusing the same exact target. That is how you play Overwatch. Very good Overwatch being played. They're focusing targets. But what's so interesting, and this is, again, more of a team thing, but we'll talk about a little bit here before we go exactly into what Finn's doing, is look at how you play Overwatch from the other side in this counter composition that they put together on the backs of Bernard's Bubbles. I called it before. That's one key cooldown. That's making Donghack's life miserable to play. Other player who's making it really hard for um, Donghack to get anything done is the one revoting, Finn. Look at this positioning. He's not in the mix, so he cannot be this target that Donghack goes on. He's, he's on the height. He would have to punch and slam to go onto him, at which point Finn could just drop. It's like too costly for Donghack to come like all the way to this high ground and like still have cooldowns to like go for a kill. So because Finn has avoided being the target, he has enabled himself to assist the target. That is being gone on. Lovely window. I love that. I love that little window. No hesitation. Rinse and repeat. You're gonna see him doing this a lot. One more time, it's so beautiful. Care, care the dive target with full care. Let him up. Kill the tank. And then some beautiful, beautiful shots on the Baptiste. I mean, nice if I remember what the spectate controls were, bro. At this window, insta deleted. Not doesn't have that LOS where it's saving you, but it's around a corner. So it's basically like he didn't even have it from the Finn's team from the gamer. Their first cap was slow. That's been the, about the only one on first that I've seen super struggle. Again, I said, I've talked about this a lot, but not really playing at all like a really um, selfish Baptiste. Really playing unselfishly to care his teammates. Chipping in damage when he can and when he doesn't have someone to heal, but basically like not really heal botting, but the most important thing he's can do is just like care who needs the care, which oftentimes is Flora. Another carry out, another fight loss. The only way to win is to kite it and refight. Coming up on our window here. See how we choose to use this. We've been heavily using it on. This is not the worst. Of course, there's Dong Hats all. And Dong Hats are struggling to like find anyone to cleanly go on. My friend's in trouble here though on the streets. I mean, like that's really the first time all game in a. 14 minute match. That's the first time he's died to Doomfist. Sort of. Like, the first time he's been, like, hard, been able to, like, a Doomfist has been able to hard commit onto him and had success doing it. Every other time, he's played extremely good positionings, and it wasn't necessarily bad positioning there. That's kind of like where he had to play to have LOS to his teammates, like, going to point. But basically, every other time, he's had next level positioning that is like outsmarted Doomfist dive that's the first time in a 15 minute match even that they just have Shuzu and then Shuzu again 
Let them up. Meteor. The Dongak one. This is a really good window, though. Wow. Such a great window. First of all, look at the fight. Not using a cooldown, guys. Saving his cooldowns. They're so key to how this fight goes out. It's both his cooldowns to save Bernard, getting him to this beat, and they get the beat. The problem is they had to use both support alts. I don't they probably did need violets, but I'm not. Tell me it's winnable. Now you see me? Now you don't. He's being so careful here. Oh, there it is. Ooh, double boop. Nothing Finn can really do there. Map one from Finn looked really, really good. Obviously, didn't end up winning the map. Um, I don't think there's much more he could have done. His windows were so effective at um, mitigating Dong Hack's effectiveness at going in on these sort of first dives, is what I would call what the Doomfist does nowadays um, as the tank. And his positioning was really good to not get caught when he didn't have the window. Um, Came down to a couple last fights there, and his team honestly got pooped off the map. And then the only fights they really lost, like consistently, was fights where one struggling to cap first point initially, and then two, um, when they had the Kariko alts. One thing I'll say before we get too far into this map, I talked about this a little bit before. I'll mention it again. This style of Baptiste is really, really good in a team setting. I don't think it's as effective in a ranked setting. And what I mean by that is. He is playing with people who he scrims with every day, I assume. Um, um, probably for a lot of hours, just getting these scrims in, practicing against the best players in the world. They know how they want to play. They know where they want to position. And that makes this support role like more of in, in a lobby where the strategies are so heavily defined and there's less chaos. It's the support is really the... Um, backbone of the composition in that they're going to make sure nobody is getting like they're carrying their teammates very heavily in these lobbies and i'm not saying you shouldn't do that in rank i'm saying you really need to play more of a flexible style in rank whereas sometimes your teammates are not going to be floor or they're not going to be some of the best dps in the world so you will have to play a more heavily dps style you might sometimes you might have to play this carrying fin style um sometimes you might have to window with your team and like combo and all with it other times you're probably gonna have to window like for yourself and just go for a lot of kills um so this educational stuff that you're seeing him do obviously you can learn a lot from it and understand a lot about this player and how they think about the game play the game but for a rank setting if you want to rank up on baptiste i think you may need a little bit more of that individualistic play style as opposed to that full team like caring play style that you're seeing finn use here Got a little tuck around the corner, but again, very careful. He's dodging all of these Doomfist slams. And again, saving all his cooldowns for when his team needs them. Not gonna be enough there. Another great lamp around the corner. There, shift for himself. Because he is just so low. That's not one about. He somehow found really. Oh, he's getting. What a jump. He's getting max value out of his life. Really enabled his team to, like, actually win this fight. Again, we saw that before. Great window around the corner so it can't be instantly broken. 
enables Flora to find the first frag. He's really been focusing a lot of his care on the floor, on the McCassidy. Um, because McCassidy, again, more basic tip, but good for that introductory level of knowledge for people watching this. Obviously, doesn't have that best mobility, only has that role. So he is an excellent target for the enemy team to dive on for those reasons. He can't really escape it. Um, and he doesn't have a shift. He doesn't have a lamp. So he's really just relying on Finn to carry him so well. And every, basically every time Finn has rose to the occasion. He just knows he has a beat. No, that's like the call. We have a beat. We have a beat. If this were me, and I play a lot of Baptiste. I would have popped all my cooldowns here, guys. Like, I would have been so panicked. Cooldowns, cooldowns, cooldowns. He just doesn't. He saves them for that exact moment when you know he's going to need it coming up here. Look at that. Look at that, guys. It doesn't even... One more time. Great follow-up damage onto this grab. Great grab from Rana. Waiting patiently until the Doom lands. Like... Guys, I, most players, I would have shifted here. You just won't do it. Perfect lamp. I would have shifted already. But now, just and enables himself to get that like max last second. Like he's saving it for the exact last moment. It's actually like making them so hard to to trade kills against his team. In the um, in the default, just constantly healing, trying to get his window back quickly. Doesn't really think much about like doing damage in these because. Only when everyone's full, really. It's an interesting, like, approach to it. Maybe he didn't need the shift there. Oh, Joe. Oh, my. Yes, dude. That's so sick. Dude, that's so sick. Dude, I love that. Wow. Wow, dude. That's such a sick window. Guys, one more time, one more time. He's gonna window and heal everybody. Guys. That's electric, dude. That's electric. Dude, just the, I mean, if anyone dies there, like, it's probably just so horrible, but, like, it's the commitment to, like, wow, he actually saves everybody with that. And now they're gonna get the one fight. Oh, this is looking good. What a beautiful maneuver here. What a little subtle movement, but it's so beautiful. They beat, and they're gonna rush in. And such a beautiful rotation. Knows that he could easily be one of the targets of this. Rush coming up to here where he would be isolated. He's actually going to... It's so smart. Drop and flip the map on them. It's and they actually get kills doing it. It's such a, a neat little... Very common strategy at high level, but something that not I see not implemented at a lot of lower ranks, or they don't understand how just how good this strategy is. It's called kiting. If you're not familiar with the word, um, that's what Finn just did a little bit of. Um, and basically, it means where you're gonna go. Like basically, keep spamming, keep staying active, but while you're doing it, you're retreating. You're basically kiting backwards, is is how you call it. Um, it's like you keep shooting, backing, shooting, backing, shooting, backing. 
and you're basically just trying to bait them into chasing you. I'm shifting, backing, shooting, backing. And you actually make them overextend so far that their beat wears off and you actually get able to trade out kills. Another great window to catch strong hat. This map, I've seen a lot more than the, the previous map. It's kind of stood out to me is like... Finn's been playing very well to counter, for sure. But I'm just not sure that Dong Hack's team has, and obviously they're very talented players, very good players. Um, I think all were Overwatch League level or close to it at some point. But I'm just not sure this isn't one of those instances of like, a lot of the times you see a team play the meta just because everyone else is playing it and they're like this is the meta and not because they actually have like a really solid foundational understanding of why the meta is good man these are some of the best players in the world no disrespect i'm not trying to say they don't know what they're doing but it seems like with these lamps and with these bubbles Team from the gamer is countering perfectly basically everything they've that this Doomfist comp has been trying to do. Somewhat effortlessly in some spots, and from the gamer just has not made any sort of adjustments. They're just constantly going onto floor, and floor just isn't tradable. With he's always getting a beat, or he's always getting assisted by a window with a lamp. Which always getting a bubble. It's like the perfect counter strategy, but it's not that all that complicated of a counter strategy, so it Seems like they don't necessarily understand fully why it's not working I just haven't seen an adjustment made on that but The problem is How much do you have to invest into that one fight? Still will leave you with a decent looking fight afterwards it's gonna be hard to construct that. Will you win this checkpoint? Will you like get the checkpoint? But also have like a decent fight. Who is the Finn is just going crazy? I think that at this point they've know they've rested them on this map. And he keeps going for Flora, but Flora cannot be. Go like that. You're just gonna get heavily punished. That's it. We're gonna just watch two maps of Finn today. I hope you were able to learn a lot about how he plays the hero. Like I said, sort of two different styles on Baptiste that you can kind of adopt. In some maps, in some games, you might actually have to switch back and forth between both. But Finn in this series, going for a super, super um Selfless Baptiste, not selfish at all. Um, really carrying his teammates a ton throughout all the fights, saving his cooldowns for when his teammates need them the most. Um, to really counter that meta comp of the Doomfist, we saw that basically fighting, fighting again. The Doom would come in and Finn would respond with a great lamp or a good shift, um, or sometimes even both. And then those bubbles from Renar going in there as well, getting mixed up. Um, for watching if you watch the full thing super appreciate we're gonna be doing more vod reviews every week on all of owcs um obviously we start off in the korea region we'll probably backtrack and do a little bit of japan because that was the first one to kick off and just watch a few of the players from that region give them some um light on the channel because there's a lot of interesting compositions players and um, strategies going on over in the japan um region as well as we'll probably do something from the Pacific as well, just to cover all of them. But I am beyond excited for this one, this Korea region, which is by far the most stacked region of all of them. Um, it's not particularly close, but also for NA to go to these group stages, because I want to review some North American players, show off the best talent 
in my home region. I'm hyped for that. Again, thanks for watching if you watched. Appreciate it. Everybody for watching. Give it a like if you liked it. We're going to be posting more of these. And um, if this is type of content you like, we're going to be doing so much OWCS content on the channel. Please feel free to subscribe. It helps a lot um, as we try and get this thing going. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And have a great rest of your week. Thank you, guys.